Hello there. And so I'm back again with part five of my lexicon series. Uh, just curious, you know, as you're watching these videos, I hope that you see that you can do exactly what I'm doing. Obviously, you won't be using the same shapes. Perhaps you're not fascinated by letters and numbers like I am. But I hope you see that, you know, a slot board can turn into just about anything. And uh, it's a great way to get started. It doesn't matter what colors you have on your beginning slot board. You can make anything happen. Even if the colors aren't in a, a chosen palette, you can always change those colors. And uh, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is working on two different paintings in the series. You'll see that I start working on one and then I start working on another one. And that's just a great way to uh, not worry about what's happening on one board. If you get stuck or you're letting paint dry, move on to the next one and then move on to the next one. And what you'll notice is that in my painting process, I'm sure it's the same in yours. There's a time to go fast and a time to slow down. So please follow along with me and I hope you're painting as well. Let me know in the comment section if you're enjoying this series. Please like and comment below, subscribe to my channel. It just makes me feel like you want more videos, okay? So here we go, part five in my lexicon series. This process is a little different from how I've done the other boards and I may end up really liking how these two boards are being done in a little bit different way. So again, variation, repetition with variation, there will be repetition of the same letters and colors because of the limited palette. But where I'm introducing something new in these two uh, boards, these last two is using some sort of structure early on that's somewhat related to the letters, but not as directly. Um, you know, curves and hard edges are what our alphabet, our lexicon, that's what the letters are, numbers and things like that, but not as literally as the actual alphabet and numbers. So coming in through here and continue to turn my board just to get the easiest place for me to get to these edges. And I'll just go based on this edge here. And make it simple. Don't want the shapes to be overly complex. It's just too much for the eye to handle. And right now, then, I've covered up quite a bit of the underpainting. And, um, you know, the question is, how does that feel? So uh, I'm going to let that kind of set up and try to make the brush strokes as smooth as possible. Although I'm running out of paint, so... Don't have a lot of paint left, but I do want to put it on kind of thick. I either just went on with a lighter value, or the paint is actually darking, uh, is actually drying to a much darker value, which is hard to tell. It probably is just drying to a much darker value because I didn't add that much white to the paint just now, and yet it looks so much lighter. So the paint just dries darker. Okay. And I'll probably go over this uh, this shape here several times uh, just to get the right thickness. Um, and I might change the color and the value and all those things. Now, probably want to let this dry. So I think I'll dry it like this. I'll work on another panel, I guess. Maybe I'll work on the other panel. Let's see here. Given these colors, so there's a lot of pink in here and the pink has to go because that's really not part of this palette. It's too bright pink, I think it might even be. Well, it's, it's I'm not sure if that's even fluorescent, but in any case, it's um, kind of off, off the palette there. And so, what have I got? Let me see what other letters I have here. Now, smaller things in here. These are smaller stencils, and I haven't really uh, used too many of these yet. But what's something I haven't used? There's a C, a smaller C. Here's a B. There's an A. A might be a good one to try. I think about, you know, our family and <laughs> what are the letters in our family and 
what are things I haven't tried yet? Three, here's numbers, which are fun. I love numbers, I love their shape. I love the number five, that's a cool shape. I've already done the six, so, but I'll, so I've been narrowed it down to this. And, you know, I can just have fun with this. Um, do something that I haven't done before. So there's like putting the letter like this, there's putting the letter upside down or sides, obviously, and running it off the edge like this. So now I'm, I'm definitely running this off the edge in a few places. So get out my white pencil again and just start to get that straight. So again, this, this is playful because I'm not thinking too hard about where to put the shapes. I'm just choosing shapes I like. A little bit more advanced play. Oops, they don't need that. So the thing about these stencils is they have these little connectors, but obviously I don't want those connectors in there. So let's get rid of them. Okay, so that's where my A is going to be. And... When you lift it up, you can find out where you forgot to put line to keep sharpening the pencil. So there's one letter. And then I was kind of thinking of a way to have fun with, um, like this is something I haven't also have not done on the other paintings. And I thought, well, this could be kind of fun to line up like the edges that, again, this, this points out how similar some of these things are in that they share uh, some similar types of lines and hard edges and curvilinear. So if I start with this, this will be kind of a very different type of board. So again, this repetition with variation, repetition of color, all the other, um, tying threads here, the fact that they're numbers and letters and, you know, that kind of thing. But but then taking a risk and going in a little bit different direction just because it's fun and gives you a bit of a, like, hmm, I wonder what will happen if I do this. And you see you can overlap things like that. So if I did this, um, and it might be best if I actually painted these first before I go too crazy with all my planning here. So I just put this color in the other panel and it might be good if I did a similar color over here. So I'll just, I've got this paint left and I start to come in here. I could also go around the shapes into the negative territory, but I'm going to stay positive with these. Or I might go, I might switch between positive shape, negative shape. That's yet another variation. You see, once you start to get into it, you start to see all these possibilities of, hmm, what if I try that? What if I try this? And each one can become a new painting. So that's kind of what I'm experiencing right now. I think there are times when I like to really paint loosely, but there are other times when like something like this, which does cause me to slow down and um, really capture these shapes that I, I have a feeling for. It just feels, it is different. It looks different. It may look like a different style, but it's another part of my personality that I want to express. Another part of my visual language that I want to try. And it has its own set of challenges. This doesn't have to be the thickest paint right off the bat. It's really just uh, the first layer here, because I do like thick paint. So just get some paint down. It doesn't even matter almost what value or what color it is. Just get some down, because the more times you go over a shape, and then if you send it back, which I, that's part of my process, I love to sand. There's just more history. And I try to keep the values somewhat close uh, because when you sand back, otherwise you're going to get all these really different values underneath. And so if I keep this a mid-tone, then 
if I sand back, I'll see mid-tone colors that aren't going to be as high contrast as if I had black over white or white over black or super high contrast. Okay, so there's that. And um, this guy, I could, again, go into the negative space around the number five just for a difference, and that would be very cool, I think. Um, so I'm going to let the A sort of rest a bit and now I want to I want a bigger letter so that or something bigger what do I have here something like this which is huge um or that's the five which I want to do and then if I line it up here so even though I didn't cut out uh, a lot of varieties of this shape <clears throat> I can go like this, overlaps the five, and then I can scoot it over so I get a different, like it won't be exactly this width, it'll be different. Um, so maybe I go like that. That way you don't have to cut out endless shapes. And then what I want to do is follow. Here. there we go. there's the shape there I want this to be a positive shape because that'll be let's see if this is positive and then it goes into these guys I'll have a negative shape and I might actually glue that on there maybe I will do that maybe I'll take a maybe I want a shape for the tree I'm going to go with this beautiful yellow. I'm going to go with a darker color. This is brown. That's like this color deep here. And it's got stuff on both sides here, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Well, there's that. You see that with this palette. I don't want papers that are too loud. Okay, so I'm going to take that J, which I just had, and do this again. Now I can use a pen. Okay, so that's why you it's drawing. I want it to be kind of dark. I don't want a lot of value changes here, so I'm going to light up and 